Life in the dead zone. I would like to inform you, my esteemed viewer, whether you know it or not, you are being fed upon. And whether you like it or not, that applies to anyone who feels the slightest tinge of fear, guilt, anger, depression, anyone. Anyone who feels any of those negative emotions, you are part of the food chain and you are being preyed upon and fed upon. Any one of the lower six generic vibratory emotions that our brain lumps together as almost countless in between sub emotions we feel, those are all food for the predator. All emotional feelings of any kind are caused by electrical friction. They are body irritants similar to the tingles of an electric shock. They are literally electric sparks within our body. Feeling is totally different from emotion. Feeling comes as a divine communication from inner you to outer you, from someone else to you, or from something else to you. The line of direction of feeling is from the one to the many. Feeling comes from the center or source of selves or things. It is spiritual in essence, while emotions come from an overload or undersupply of physical body energy. It acts like a mental or physical body irritant. Feeling is like a... Hmm, Yeah, feeling is like being annoyed, irritated with me and my little shenanigans. But look, I've got something here real for you. Let's talk about God. Let's talk about Satan. The symbolic existence of God and Satan certainly doesn't exist in nature. Certainly it does exist in nature, the symbolic existence. However, that quality and appearance of either aspect of this vast universal duality is conditioned by the thinking of man. Man forms or shapes his own ideas about God and Satan. Actually, these are only names given by those who are ignorant of the mysteries of life. The law of one means that there is but one life that may be known in terms of a major duality, energy and mass, spirit and matter. Light and dark, God and Satan ad infinitum, meaning without end. There is a definite esoteric reason why man may actually be confronted by God or Satan. The mental plane is a reality to be dealt with in human consciousness. Man's creations on that plane contain exactly the same degree of life that he imbues within them. Thought forms are alive. The ignorant man can and does meet his own thought creation consciously while in objective physical form through hallucination or while in the subjective astral and the mental realm does in dreams or after death. Hell and heaven are the literal subjective realms of awareness that man experiences whether in the physical form or out of it. And man continues to meet and deal with these two sub-creations, God and Satan, as perceived when anyone and many of his realms of self-consciousness, as long as, wait for it, wait for it, he continues to give them form and validity. Energy follows thought. All is energy. Everything in existence is but a vibratory frequency of an energetic form. It is a fact that a deeply religious person can work himself into such a religious ecstasy that he literally conjures up a live image of Christ or some saint of special interest to him. In all these cases, energy follows thought. Let's say that one more time, okay, folks? Pot, in C, female, male. Energy follows thought. Baby, energy follows thought. Robot, energy follows thought. Crow. Did we get that? Energy follows thought. The flow of love. From the embodiment of the thought form of Christ can give him inspiration, cause instant healing, and myriads of other such miracles in nature. On the opposite spectrum, the appearance of the devil to one who engages in black masses and weird rites of Satanism is simply a live thought form conjured up by the mind of man. All of these abominable mental aberrations can imbue their creators with great physical power and can cause astonishing magic or obvious miraculous results. Countless victims of voodoo rites, black magic spells and charms give ample testimony to this. 
The knowing student of the occult gives no power or credence to the concepts of God and Satan as ordinarily understood by the masses. He knows that neither God nor devil exist out there, somewhere in space. The student of the occult, the astute student of the occult, recognizes that these are all simply names for the separately perceived positive or negative expressions of the one life. What is the law? The law of one. Namaste. Namaskaram. The astute student of the occult knows these personified entities to be two streams or expressions of the one. Because everything is an expression of the one life. Whether they are God and devil, or spirit and matter, energy and mass, or the dual streams of positive and negative, male and female, involution and involution, up and down, black and white, and so on endlessly, it does not even ever matter. The one life can be approached as a major dual, triple, or sevenfold level or dimension of creation, a gamut of twofold. Threefold and sevenfold divisions is infinite only by the nature of the part that approaches the whole. No magician gives undue emphasis to the personifications of the dualities, triplicities, and septates. One, three, and seven. He knows them all clearly at some level of consciousness and can rise or descend to the occasion, thus controlling the events of time and space surrounding him. If the average person does not understand the mysteries of life, he must continue to live with his ignorance and play the low vibration role of a victim of circumstance. He or she must pay the price of dealing with his personalized creation, whether of God or of the devil. In the meantime, he continues to live within the dark regions of superstition, of abnormal fears and gruesome doubts or exaggerated thoughts and feelings of his own or her own, his religion or her religions, his race or her race, or his country or her country, or of origin, self-importance in the socially mass-controlled scheme of things. Man on this planet must begin to realize that there is but one life, one God, one being, that one life brings about all the cause and effect within his own nature. Within this gigantic, evenfold, phenomenal framework of his existence, all things are relative. Good and bad are only merely terms denoting the ensuing moreness or lessness of any part's perspective and are therefore judged bad or good. Whatever brings on cautious lessness within this whole stimulates repulsion, fear, and hatred, and is therefore so labeled bad by the recipient's consciousness abiding in that affected form. There is no personal God or devil looking down over our shoulder, giving us kudos or demerits. The God self or devil self exists within each and every one of us. How much of these positive or negative qualities streaming from the vast universal duality that we embody within us fashions our own particular lifestyle? We can choose to be a sinner or a saint. The choice is definitely ours and ours alone to make. Without exception, every situation in life is a grand school of learning experience. It is a test in 3D duality for each and all of us to see whether we will bring forth the higher self or the lower self in whatever event. Every time we rise above our petty mental fixations and groundless emotional fears to meet the other person or new situation in life with the highest nature within us, we score victory for self-liberation. Self-liberation, even. However, this takes constant vigilance. It takes a conscious, deliberate act of will, of work, and of deliberate tension or extension to meet life at our highest living plateau. Yet there is no other sure way. Every step of existence on the path toward freedom of the spirit and therefore of self-mastery is built day by day, event by event. We become masters by mastering, not by any magical bridge from here to some idyllic there. Control of life is wrought confinely on concrete, physical plane levels. This is where all our drives and all our appetites must be met, known and curbed, and if needed, to be fully self-controlled. Inside his own being is the battleground where the magician learns to become the master of his own sweet life, the pilot of his destiny. No outside God or devil can do it for him or keep him from doing it. And I'd like to provide an example of uh, self-mastery, uh, how we are continuously tested. So I had to take a bus trip um, up to Oklahoma just a couple of days ago, my, my mother passed away. And so I had to take a bus trip since I don't have a personal vehicle except for my electric scooter and was about to drive that all the way up to Oklahoma. 
although I've done crazy stuff like that before. But anyway, this is about self-mastery. And I think this is an illustrative story. Um, as I was boarding the bus, uh, and the bus driver I knew because this was the same bus driver that I had on the uh, trip up there. So on the return trip from Dallas to Austin, I uh, had the same bus driver and very flashy fellow. He, he uh, very, very high speed. This guy was, uh, he was a young guy. He, in a, you know, he had his Greyhound uh, outfit on and everything, but he also had, a, had his combat infantry badge. You know, he had it kind of fixed on there to his uniform, just letting folks who knew who, how to recognize what a combat infantry badge was. But anyway, I'm not surprised because this guy, even if he didn't have that combat infantry badge, he was a high speed, uh, high, highly motivated, very professional individual. And anyway, you know, uh, he was very flashy too. You know, he had some really, really uh, good designer uh, glasses on and uh, he had these blue sequence like shoes, like this dude was a character, I'm telling you, but highly professional. Anyway, uh, you know, because I had kind of said something to him on the way up Dallas, hey, I like your, like your uh, glasses, those are badass glasses. And anyway, so I don't know if he was razzing me and back, but uh, as I was trying to show him my ticket for the return trip, he, he, he kind of was abrasive with me, you know, it was a big line and we were just boarding the bus, but he, he kind of ordered me off to the side and made me wait. And, um, and he let about five or six people in front of me or uh, that were behind me get on the bus. So whatever, you know, I kept my cool. It's just all good. It's just really how you have to maintain self-control in all situations. But anyway, so, you know, he, he, then he got to me and he found what he needed on my uh, smartphone uh, and the ticket in my email. And he allowed me to board the bus and I went and sat down. But anyway, there was this girl that had been chatting with me who turned out she was a full blood Native American girl from Minot, North Dakota. And I've been up there to Minot, North Dakota. I know the, uh, the reservations up there and I had stories to tell. And so she and I were chatting. But anyway, of course, she saw this interplay between the bus driver and myself. And when uh, I got sat down and got situated and, you know, she kind of got like a seat over there kind of across uh, the, the way from me. And she like kind of looked at me and, and she went, man, just can't believe how some people talk to others. And what she was referring to is that situation. And I, and I, um, I looked at her and I said, well, ma'am, when you believe that everything is the voice of God, then it's all good. And, uh, and I had my, my uh, Tibetan uh, per impermanence mala beads on. And, uh, you know, and I, you know, I was still in my funeral clothes for my mother, God bless her soul, uh, Lillian, Lillian McGuire. Um, she did pass away last week. But anyway, and <laughs> but that's what I told that girl. I, I mean, I was it, it, at no point was I ever flustered or put out. It was just going with the flow. But, you know, I, I, I think she was testing me kind of, but everyone that was around and sitting in that little area, they all just looked at me and just smiled at me, you know, like I just made this peaceful uh, statement. I, but I just, you know, she, she was, I guess she was trying to see if it got, kind of got me upset or got me, you know, flustered or something. But I, I looked at her and said, ma'am, you know, and I mean, I mean this, this is how you must interpret all phenomenon for, for peaceful uh, integration of your divine higher self with your lower nature. The higher nature must always, always inform the lower nature. Every emotion, every kind of lower uh, anxiety must always be mastered. And so I said to her, I'll, let me repeat it because it bears repeating. And I mean this, I fully mean this. And I said, well, so ma'am, you know, when you recognize that everything is the voice of God, then it is all good. And it is all good, folks. Namaste. Namaste.